the first thing I want to say though, it's really great that we're at a macro conference talking about microdata because that's something that 10 years ago just wouldn't happen. Um, kind of go off and talk about micro data in a separate room and macroeconomists would talk about it somewhere else. So it's great that we're, we're kind of embracing the fact that macro and micro aren't separate things. Um, so that's a very positive thing. And the fact that we're talking about regions. Um, but before I, before I get into the detail, I want to say very briefly about kind of what the Industrial Strategy Council is. Um, so building on what Penny said earlier, one of the kind of commitments in the Industrial Strategy document that Penny showed you was to set up an Industrial Strategy Council. Now the Council's remit is essentially to provide impartial and expert evaluation of the government's progress in delivering the aims of the Industrial Strategy. What I do, my job, is basically to lead the Council's research and analytical work programme to kind of do that, do that job. Um, so that's kind of where the Council sit. In terms of the kind of broader political context, I think it's fair to say that tackling regional kind of spatial disparities is basically top of the agenda at the moment. Um, the kind of popular term people like to use at the moment is levelling up. Um, it's been called lots of things over you know, the past 20 years, but it's kind of, that's not really a new thing. You know, regional disparities are long-standing and they've always been on the government's agenda, whether they've been top or second or third, they've always been there. Um, it's not really difficult to see why. So this is a uh, this uh, what this slide kind of shows why that is always the case. So what this chart shows you is basically the difference between the most productive region and the least productive region. So you can see the UK falls very badly on this. Um, I think those regions are somewhere in London and Cornwall. I think are the two regions um, that give you this big big gap. The, the only people that the only countries worse are Poland and Romania. Um, so this is why they're kind of, there's a lot of interest in this. Um, I think the other thing that kind of, the other bit of policy context here is we've had regional policy for a long time as well. It's not new to have regional policy. Um, I'll just stick these up. I'm not going to talk through these, but I think you can describe regional policy as a, basically in a state of constant flux. Here I've just given you a bit of a flavour of that um, to see how much it's changed a lot and what the, whether the focus has changed. One thing, I mean, economists tend to like to uh, disagree on things, but I'd be very surprised if you can find an economist that tells you that structural regional policies happen quickly in terms of their impacts. So this, this flux that we've seen can't be a good thing for, in terms of policy deliverable. Um, we, you know, we need a bit more kind of, um, a, a bit less flux and a bit more certainty. Um, I'll come back to this. Um, so I think... One thing the council kind of definitely agrees on is that addressing regional disparities is a critical element of the industrial strategy. Um, so for the past year, um, the council has had a specific work stream on what's called like the places foundation of the industrial strategy. Um, next Tuesday, actually, we are publishing a evidence review um, which looks at the causes and nature of regional disparities uh, across the UK. I mean, it includes it references Penny's work, for example. Um, I'm not going to take you through that because it kind of takes us beyond the kind of topic of today. Um, it comes out next Tuesday, it'll be on the website, that's the, that's the plug over. Um, I will draw on a few bits of the evidence from it though, because I think they're kind of really relevant. So I want to start with this slide, I want to stick these up. Um, so this is basically the macro context. Um, this is a map of the UK. Um, it is the more traditional way to think about kind of UK performance based on the normal regional boundaries. Um, what this does, it basically says, let's look at the kind of what we like to call the kind of steaming ahead versus the falling behind. So what this does is it classifies regions by what their average productivity was um, in 2008 and how they've grown since then. Um, so we have, for example, the kind of steaming ahead people uh, regions are those that had above average productivity and grew above average productivity growth. So they basically have increased their gap over everybody else. We've then got the kind of falling behind who are, in 2008 had lower levels of productivity and since then have had lower average growth than the uh, lower, lower than average growth. Um, so why do we why do we care? Um, you know. Why, why does this matter from a macro perspective? So one thing you can do, which is quite interesting, is a very simple exercise to say, well, what if we manage to get those regions that are, that are falling behind up to average UK productivity? What would that do? What would that do to our aggregate productivity? And the answer is 3%. So you could boost 3% of productivity by 3% if you made those falling behind places, it just at the average, 
Um, now, I recognise this is a somewhat arbitrary exercise, and of course, how you get there is a bigger question. Um, but it does kind of show the kind of potential for the kind of gains from levelling up, um, as it likes to be called at the moment, and the kind of potential gains for good regional policy. Um, all of that said, I think the work that Penny and Elsa have taken you through does highlight some of the kind of pitfalls of this chart. Um, you know, the, the boundaries here are very kind of arbitrary and actually don't really reflect kind of the economics on the ground. Um, they are, you know, historic kind of local authority boundaries that don't really reflect the economics. Um, so what's the, where does this leave you? Well, evidence-based policy is obviously what we all strive for. I mean, that's kind of my job. Um, I think what we've learned over the last year as part of our kind of evidence review is that in terms of regional growth, and specifically regional policy, the evidence is at best patching. Um, I don't think that's due to lack of effort from people like Penny and Elsa. Um, it reflects things like data gaps, too much data, um, complexity, um, and actually misunderstanding. So for example, on the latter, you, I too often hear people say, oh, the problem is the North-South divide, or the problem is that cities have done well and nobody else has. Um, I think the work that we, we just heard about explains the problem with that. I mean, that, 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 that kind of really highlights the problem with those generalisations. For example, not all cities have done well, and some of the cities that have done well are in the north. Um, so those generalisations made on kind of high-level data with lack of understanding don't help us kind of move forward in terms of the policy debate. Um, the other thing I would kind of highlight, which I think is a really important point, is in terms of the evidence, there's a lot more evidence on the diagnosis than there is on the cure. There's lots of evidence on why there's productivity disparities across the UK, a lot less on how you solve them and what you might do to reduce them. Um, and that's obviously a problem from a policy-making uh, perspective. Um, so as a good example, I would guess if I ask most people in this room, they could list me five or six things that they think matter for the local growth. They're the kind of usual suspects. I'll put some of them up. Skills, <coughs> infrastructure, job. They're the things people would tell you. If I then ask you... If the government had a spare pound, which of those should it spend it on? The answer would vary a lot more, and a lot of people would probably look at their feet and say, I don't really know. Um, and that reflects, I think, that we kind of know these things all matter, but from a policy perspective, we don't really know which ones we should prioritise. And I, I would argue, and I think this, the work highlights this, that the answer to that probably depends on where you go. If you go to London, it's not obvious to me that we're lacking in infrastructure. Um, if you go to some of the places in the northeast that aren't Newcastle, they clearly lack a lot of infrastructure. Um, so there's this big question about how can we understand that better? And I think these papers are a really good step in kind of helping us think about actually what is the kind of narrowing down that diagnosis, but in a much more sophisticated way. So yes, of course, every, we want everyone to have better skills, but that in itself isn't really a concrete policy aim that you can that government can deliver. Um, I think infrastructure is kind of an interesting question. I think it relates very closely to the, the work we've just seen. If I happen to find a, a billion pounds in the cupboard, should I go and spend it on HS2 or should I spend it on local bus routes? And I think the work that we've heard today might at least help us answer that question because it would tell us, OK, what is this going to do to people's commuting times, clusters, etc., if we spend it on these different things? So I think that's an area where we can actually help kind of I think this work potentially has a, a kind of scope to help us think a bit more about the cure and less about the diagnosis. We all know there's big regional disparities and we all know these things matter, but if I'm going to spend some money and do some policy, what is going to be effective? <coughs> uh, I think the other thing I'd flag, I think, which is really interesting and is something we should definitely kind of explore more is the kind of Manchester Wigan case study. I think this for me is a, the step in the right direction because it, it, it doesn't just do, I mean, this is why Wigan's falling behind and this is why... Manchester is doing really well, it kind of says, if you wanted Wigan to do better, how could you help it do better? And that, to me, is the kind of really key question for, to, to think about. Um, so that's definitely an area where I think we need to do more, kind of more work. Um, so I'll finish with a couple of specific points related to the, the work we've seen and then a kind of general round, round up. So in terms of the kind of specific work, I, one thing I'd really like to see in terms of the work Penny talked about is um, how we can link this to kind of productivity. So it's very much driven by employment and employment concentration, but how, how we can think about this in productivity space and how do we 
what are the productive or, or above average productive sectors in Wigan that we might want to support that we actually potentially could? Um, not just creating employment, because of course employment and productivity aren't necessarily the same and don't always kind of match, although obviously they are correlated. I think the area of Elsa's work that I'm particularly interested in is on innovation. Um, so there's a broad consensus, I think, in the UK that the UK is really good at research. It's like top of the league table in various ways. Um, what it's less good at is commercialising those new ideas. And it's also less good at diffusion, diffusing technology around the, around the economy. So you can go to two very similar businesses a few miles away from each other, one who are kind of at the frontier of technology and one that's like using technology from 35 years ago. Why, why in the UK is that the case? And is there, can, what can your work tell us about, firstly, why that problem exists and secondly, how we might solve it? Um, I think more broadly, um, I still think we're in a world where the kind of root causes of regional disparities and how we solve them is still a very difficult and complex question. Um, I think these two papers, or the work that you've talked about, I, think they, I don't think they answer that. I think they definitely move us in the right direction. Um, and my own personal view is that optimal regional policy needs to be much more focused on kind of the local issues and the clusters and things that exist and less on kind of local authority boundaries. And I'll conclude on that. Thank you. Thank you.